if uh, we talk about the updates about the news uh, i would subjectively tell you that uh, there are not uh, many things that have changed in dnipro we still have arrivals uh, of uh, big missiles and uh, um, luckily in dnipro itself uh, our anti-missile system works uh, and uh, every day we have uh, two or three rockets that are hit in the air. Regretfully, a few days ago, for example, we had uh, the um, big accident because uh, despite the rocket was hit in the air, the debris of it fell into the residential building's yard and uh, there were people who, uh, who were injured and uh, two people died because of that. So despite uh, the target of these arrivals uh, wasn't hit, uh, it is still a lot of danger even if you have this anti-missile system. And uh, also since uh, our last meeting, since our last vlog, uh, we had a big arrival in the center of the city, which hit uh, the market and residential buildings. It is ridiculous and probably it wasn't their target, but that's what we have. These huge rockets like uh, X-101 or Calibers or Iskanders, and now on top of these uh, Iranian unmanned planes, they are all, uh, they're like plane kamikaze, they are all targeting some things and uh, they are so unprecise and bad that they usually hit residential buildings and kill civilians only. Uh, sometimes, like in Zaporizhia, which is uh, not far from Dnipro, it's maybe 80 kilometers uh, from the edge to edge of the cities. And uh, in Zaporizhia we have uh, a very severe situation with 10 uh, either rockets or drones every day attacking the city and uh, they also don't hit what they are supposed to hit because uh, the last uh, bomb uh, which arrived uh, it arrived uh, very close uh, uh, to the plotting to this uh, engineering construction which is uh, uh, separating Dnipro in two parts uh, and uh, this is one of the biggest uh, hydro uh, uh, stations like uh, I'll, I'll show you the picture because I don't know how to explain you but they were targeting this bridge and they were targeting this platine that uh, in case if it uh, really is damaged uh, even the place where I am now I'm sitting now it uh, will be flooded with the waters of Dnipro river because uh, the uh, levels of water the difference in levels of water in this uh, point is more than 20 meters and uh, this is of course uh, terrible and uh, also in Zaporizhia uh, they don't have that good uh, anti-air system and that's why the majority of bombs they arrive and uh, luckily or not luckily I don't know how can I react on it but they are not precise and in most cases what they tried to hit what Russia tried to hit is not hit that's uh, what we talk uh, about bombings if we talk about bombings and uh, again if we talk about land on land uh, if considered Dnipro. I know that uh, you all were watching this uh, huge counteroffensive uh, in Izum and uh, this is something very exciting and we are so happy about it because uh, some refugees that are coming uh, to our help point uh, are from this region and they are also very happy and uh, our volunteer Natalia who uh, you s uh, saw in the previous video she is uh, from the place near Izum not uh, from Izum itself but from the place near Izum which is still occupied as per the moment I'm recording this video she's also extremely excited and she's waiting that uh, maybe after one month after the, the occupation of her place uh, she might go back home so we all watch this but if we talk about Dnipro itself the front line is still at the same place so front line here is not moving that's good and bad at the same time on the one hand Russians cannot access Dnipro on the land uh, on the other hand we also don't occupy these territories that uh, are closer to Dnipro but still uh, they cannot shell us with grads, they sh cannot shell us with books, uh, they are far enough. Uh, uh, so the main danger here in Dnipro is these big rockets still. And now Iranian, uh, this unmanned planes, kamikaze, is also the same as bomb, in fact. 
Also, there is a bigger level of threat uh, with the nuclear weapons, but probably you know about this. But again, it is the possibility of bombing or it is the possibility of uh, the nuclear disaster on the Parisian power station. That's the safety situation. And uh, of course, uh, one of the main things that happened uh, during these uh, two weeks, uh, it was uh, the freeing of uh, Ukrainian prisoners of war. Actually, I showed you pictures last time when I was talking that we need to do something so they'll be free. And uh, all people whom I showed you on these pictures are now free, which is uh, such a happy event. They are all uh, in a very bad physical condition. They were underfed. Uh, Russia fed them with uh, animal food, with the food you usually feed to cattle. Uh, no vegetables, no meat, uh, uh, drinking only water and eating this kind of porridge that literally you give uh, to your cattle here. And uh, despite that, their homes, they are now under uh, treatment in hospitals. and. Uh, Mariana, whom, uh, whom I also showed you, uh, she had a baby and she has a baby girl now. She literally uh, delivered a child uh, one day after she was freed from prison. Despite that, there are still uh, 800 of uh, Azov fighters who are still in captivity and there are also women who are pregnant there. And uh, also, uh, these people also need uh, to be free, of course, and uh, that's why we shouldn't uh, relax, we shouldn't lay back and we shouldn't stop uh, to do what we are doing. As for the volunteering and uh, as for the refugee situation, it is not a big income of new refugees, but uh, people who came in summer, they were not prepared for the cold season. So now the biggest request uh, is warm clothing and uh, uh, blankets, uh, everything warm that you can uh, basically give them. Also, the need for food is still there, and uh, it is the same people who need it. And uh, we had the possibility today, the second time to give uh, borscht sets to some of them but again uh, the most people who are coming they come for the first time and uh, we had to uh, make bigger our aid and thank you all for your donations thank you for your support because uh, we had the possibility uh, to make the number of people bigger and this week i bought not 80 food sets but 100 and also other organizations are helping and uh, this way we can uh, deliver, distribute uh, 140 food bags every week. Again, we started with 20, then it was 40, then I bought 80, now I'm buying 100. And uh, also other people are buying uh, starting from 20 and now they're buying 40. So that's how it's working right now. As for the needs uh, to the army, uh, the majority of these needs are covered by now, uh, covered with the help of uh, international partners, but uh, there are still things that are needed, they're smaller and they're more specific. So basically what we do is we talk uh, to the soldiers, and, and soldiers are basically boys with the neighborhood you can see around me, who are playing football like these small boys are playing now. And uh, we talk to them and there will be something specific uh, this or that group uh, will want you to buy. For example, uh, it is uh, early, uh, early autumn now, but uh, it is quite cold. I took off my jacket, but uh, when I walked here, I was in uh, the additional jacket and uh, at night the temperature drops uh, uh, to 15 or maybe even to uh, 12 degrees and that means that it is cold and uh, they um, ask for this thermal underwear like you know long uh, trousers and uh, long t-shirt long sleeve t-shirts uh, uh, just for now because uh, later probably it will be given centralized way uh, and uh, it will be distributed with the Ministry of Defense but right now because usually um, September is not that cold uh, it is not in their sets so we bought six uh, of these uh, long sleeve uh, uh, t-shirts and uh, uh, these uh, warm trousers that they can wear under their uniform. That is one example. And of course there are some cookies that you need to, to do and they are not in this list. So the food is also provided centrally and it is quite good. 
or if somebody is losing something like a medical kit or if somebody's kit is used actually also they're using it if something is used we need to replace it that's basically what we do as for the medicine again it is distributed but sometimes it's not enough or not of the desired quality and uh, we are buying some things uh, just uh, like uh, anti-burn uh, this anti-burn covers uh, of, uh, or some kind of go uh, gauze uh, just to deliver because it is better, it is easier to carry, it is better than, they, than what we get essentially. So that's how volunteering goes uh, in right now. Again, it is this point, everything is changing very fast, the needs are changing. Some of them are changing logically because it's cold, uh, you need warm things. Uh, some of them are not uh, expected uh, sometimes, so somebody says I need this and for some I don't know why, for some reason, uh, suddenly we started to need diapers for adults, which is uh, the need that uh, we didn't have in spring, for example, and in early summer. And uh, I cannot explain it if there are really more people or if there are other organizations who uh, distributed it before but don't do it anymore. But uh, we have more requests for these adult diapers. Again, we don't have the, uh, the request for the newborn baby's diapers, but we have a request for big diapers for children who are 10. And this is connected to their stress level. I think I told you about it, but I'm, I'm not sure I'm just repeating it. So now it's like size 4 diapers, size 4 diapers, size 5, and diapers for adults so that uh, are on high demand in our volunteering point. And uh, as for the rest, uh, as you see, I'm outside now. Uh, life is going on and uh, sometimes you can even forget if the weather is good and everything is fine. You can even forget that the voice is so close, it's literally here. And uh, uh, in other moments, uh, when there is an explosion and, or when you are reading the news or when you are going to hospital to visit uh, wounded people, for them we actually also bring only tasty things because uh, the medical part of their treatment is fully covered. So only in this uh, smaller situation, so people in uniform or military vehicle is going suddenly. So it is like life half normal, half uh, terrible here. And uh, what's changed a lot is that people don't smile anymore they're not in such a terrible condition as uh, in spring but everybody is depressed and you would rarely see people smiling here everybody is uh, in this uh, kind of condition of uh, quietness and uh, insecurity and um, most people lost their jobs uh, for example I met here my old acquaintance who said that both she and her husband lost their jobs and they have a child to care about so this is also this insecurity of locals, this uh, big number of refugees, this uncertainty on uh, the things that are going to happen and the things that are going to happen next, uh, tomorrow or day after tomorrow. They bring uh, all this kind of uh, anxiety in the air and uh, that's uh, that what basically forms our society here right now. That's it. Uh, if you have uh, any questions, uh, please feel free to ask me in the comment box. Uh, also, if you read my diary, of course, you know the most of it, so maybe I repeat myself somewhere. Thank you so much for staying with us. Thank you for helping Ukraine. If you can, please put the sign Stand for Ukraine on your uh, profile pictures and social medias. That helps because uh, people are kind of tired of war and people are asking if I'm tired of war, I'm not, I need to, to survive it and my best plan is to survive this winter for example. So please make sure that other people don't forget about it, try here to inform others. If you can, uh, please donate, if you can't donate, just try to talk about somebody, try to express your support to somebody and uh, pray for us, that helps a lot. Thank you so much and I hope to see you next time in more peaceful environment. Goodbye for now.